Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another Historic Game to video. Today we're taking a look at a mono white prison control deck which is playing the 9 lives plus solemnity combo. For those that don't know, 9 lives a 3 mana rare enchantment with hexproof, saying if a source would deal damage to you, prevent that damage and put an incarnation counter on 9 lives instead. And when there are 9 or more counters on 9 lives, exile it, and when it leaves the battlefield, you lose the game. So 9 lives is this weird pseudo life game card that you ideally play after having taken a bit of damage already, and that and buys you more time, and because it has hexproof, the opponent cannot easily get rid of it unless they have an untargeted effect like Ugin the Spirit Dragon using a minus three could be problematic because then you lose the game on the spot, or maybe a blast zone taking up to three counters to get rid of it. Those are the commonly played cards that can get rid of it. And then the combo works with Solemnity, another three mana enchantment, saying players cannot get counters, which can be effective against opposing energy decks, and counters cannot be put on artifacts, creatures, enchantments, or lanes so it even stops the blast zone from accumulating extra counters but of course the most important part is that it prevents nine lives from getting any counters so if we have both nine lives and solemnity in play we cannot take any damage unless the opponent has a very specific answer like maybe the stomp from bone crusher giant can still allow us to take damage or if the opponent has a questing beast in play so those are two commonly played cards that you still have to watch out for but for the most part against a lot of decks if we get both enchantments in play we cannot take damage and then eventually we can win the game with maybe an approach of the second sun or the angel tokens from Emirios Call. So that's the basic gist of the deck. Then we're also playing the full playset of Idyllic Tutor to search up any enchantment out of our deck so it can help us assemble the Solemnity Nine Lives combo, but we also have some various one-offs that we can search up with it. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. We're also playing Kahira as our companion since we don't have any creatures in the main deck, so randomly gives us access to a 3-2 creature. Then at one mana we've got Authority of the Consuls, which we can potentially search up with our Idyllic Tutor, saying creatures your opponents control enter the battlefield tapped, and whenever a creature enters a battlefield under an opponent's control, you gain one life, so this can be very useful against opposing aggro decks, especially ones with a lot of haste creatures which will come into play tapped, and this can also come in handy against the Neoform combo decks, because if we have authority in play, the opponent will have all their creatures come into play tapped after comboing, so they won't be able to attack for lethal right away, and that potentially gives you the opportunity to wipe the board with the Wrath of God on the following turn to then stabilize. Then at 2 mana we've got some cheap removal with Baffling End, getting rid of a creature with converted mana cost 3 or less. We've got one copy of Rest in Peace, which can be useful against opposing graveyard decks. And then we've got some Ramp with the full playset of Guardian Idol and the full playset of Mindstone, because getting to play Solemnity and Nine Lives, especially if we also need to cast Idyllic Tutor, does take a little bit of time, so having the extra Ramp from Guardian Idol and Mindstone can definitely come in handy. And we've got some other expensive cards we can ramp into, like our two copies of Immortal Sun or Approach and our four copies of Emirios Call in the mana base. Then besides Nine Lives, Solemnity and Tutor, we also have a one-off copy of Banishing Light as kind of a catch-all removal spell we can search up. And then at 4 mana, Gideon's Intervention, which as it enters the battlefield we have to choose a card name and your opponents cannot cast spells with a chosen name and prevent all damage that would be dealt to you and permanence you control by sources with the chosen name. So there's a lot to unpack here. First off, Gideon's Intervention can prevent a combo deck from functioning. If we can shut down one specific card, like against a Neoform deck, we could name Neoform. It can also prevent a creature that's already in play from dealing additional damage to us and sometimes we can use it to make sure that the opponent doesn't have any way to get rid of our combo pieces. For instance, if we're playing against a deck playing Skyclave Apparition potentially, we can name Skyclave Apparition so they can't get rid of Solemnity. If we're playing against a deck that's potentially playing Bonecrusher Giant, we'd need to make sure to name Stomp and not Bonecrusher Giant itself, so the opponent can't still finish us off even if we have the two combo pieces in play. Sometimes you just want to name Thoughtseize if you have a bunch of cards in hand that you want to protect. So there's a lot of versatility to Gideon's Intervention. And then we also have the full playset of Wrath of God, just to have a clean sweeper to destroy all creatures. And then we've got two copies of The Immortal Sun, which we can ramp into ahead of schedule thanks to Mindstone and Guardian Idol. And it also shuts down all activated abilities of Planeswalkers. And since we don't have any ourselves, it's going to be a one-sided effect. At the beginning of our draw step, we get to draw an additional card, and our spells cost one less to cast. And then finally, our creatures get plus one plus one, which is nice if we start making tokens with Castle Ardenvale or tokens with Emiria's Call. 
Then we've got a one-off copy of Approach of the Second Sun, which can be a nice win condition against decks that have a lot of removal and can easily deal with all our creature tokens. We'll gain 7 and then put it back into our library 7th from the top, and we can easily draw into it again, especially with a Mortal Sun, or maybe an Arch of Araska or Mindstone drawing towards it, so we can cast a second copy to win the game. And then 4 copies of Emeria Skull, which is also part of our mana base, and can also potentially be ramped towards a little bit faster to make those 2 Angel tokens, which can close out the game pretty quickly. 3 copies of Castle Ardenvale as another mana sink and win condition, and then 12 planes, 2 copies of Arch of Araska, which can also draw additional cards if we reach the City's Blessing, which we can do pretty quickly thanks to all those enchantments and artifacts, and then the full playset of Zalfurn Void, which when it enters the battlefield lets us cry one, since at the end of the day we're a combo deck trying to assemble 9 lives plus Solemnity, so any card selection that helps us with that is appreciated. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Lurus of the Dream Den deck. And yeah, this hand seems good. We've got double nine lives and tutor to find Solemnity. And a bit of ramp with Guardian Idol. And especially against the Spirit Dancer deck, nine lives is gonna buy us a ton of time. Although it looks like a red-black Pyromancer deck instead. So they can have Thought Seize to disrupt our combo. And there it is. So probably takes Tudor, leaving us with double nine lives. Nope, took one of the nine lives anyway. And we drew into Solemnity, so probably implies they have a second Thought Seize. But uh, yeah, we have a bit of redundancy here. Maybe a Dreadhorde Arcanist. Nope, Stitcher Supplier. Finds Claim to Fame. Alright, so step one... Do I 9 lives or Solemnity? I guess they don't know about Solemnity yet, so maybe I should just 9 lives first. Yeah, sure. And then if next turn they thought ceased thinking of taking Tutor, they're gonna take Solemnity, and then we get to Tutor for a second Solemnity instead. And the red-black deck is not gonna have any way of dealing with their enchantments once they're in play. So, if they have Claim in hand, they can maybe Claim the Arcanist and then give it haste to get back Thoughtseize, or they could have drawn into a second copy. But once we play Solemnity, the game is over, so... Alright, they have Claim for Arcanist and they can give it haste, so that's gonna take Solemnity. Is there another Thoughtseize in the graveyard? Just a one. So yeah, we can tutor for another Solemnity and take it from there. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, I guess my opponent doesn't know that we have Solemnity in hand, so they thought they could wait an extra turn while we tutor for Solemnity, but turns out we just have Solemnity in hand, and that should seal the deal. Uh, just gotta watch out, I guess, for my opponent having some way of making us lose life instead of deal damage. We'll get rid of the Arcanist, because... It getting village rights back could be an issue. Let's see, Croxa, I guess, makes us lose life. So Croxa is a way for the opponent to maybe still do something. But as long as we have cards to discard, it's not an issue. Because, yeah, 9 lives only prevents damage and not loss of life. But, yeah, our opponent concedes. We've assembled the lock and uh, eventually we can win the game with some angel tokens or maybe an approach of the second sun. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Tudor can find one of the combo pieces, Void can maybe find a second. And then we've got Guardian Isle to make sure we can Wrath on three, so we don't get run over. I'll wait on Void just to make sure we know what matchup we're playing. And it looks like Goblins. Alright, so against Goblins, getting Solemnity 9 lives should be game over. So I'll keep Solemnity on top. Um, do I Baffling and the Snoop? Don't have to. Yeah, I guess we'll idle for now. And then maybe we'll Wrath, depending on what they play. So we know they'll have a Muxus in hand at some points. But they don't seem to have the fastest draw. So, what's the sequencing going to be like? Solemnity doesn't really stop anything out of the Goblin deck. So do I tutor for 
nine lives first. I think I do. Opponent's got main deck Herald's Horn, so prepared for the grindy matchups. Warchief. Alright, so next turn, probably gonna Wrath. Alternatively, I can Baffling and the Warchief and then play 9 lives and then extra Solemnity. Maybe that's even safer. Because it plays around my opponent killing me out of nowhere with Muxus if they get lucky. And then 9 lives before Solemnity. I don't think we're gonna be taking damage from 9 different creatures. Although, as I say that, Phyrexian Tower could get us. Alright. They found double Krenko, but they don't have a way to give it haste. Otherwise, Krenko plus haste enabler could have maybe done it. But Solemnity should be game over. Could also Wrath of God, but this is just safer. And my opponent concedes. Sweet. So yeah, they almost got us thanks to that Phyrexian Tower, giving them one mana out of nowhere. But uh, luckily, we got the job done here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. With an acceptable hand. Got one of our two combo pieces, a bit of ramp. And Guardian Idol also helps us activate Arch sooner. Feathered Pools, typically not a great sign. So a Sultai deck. Play Guardian Idol first, and then next turn we can Mindstone plus Idol. So against the Sultai mid-range deck, cards to watch out for. Sometimes they have Maelstrom Pulse to blow up Solemnity. I've seen Ugin the Spirit Dragon, so having Immortal Sun in play is going to be very useful. And uh, sometimes you run into Casualties of War. So those are kind of the ways they have of dealing with our enchantments. Although if we can find Solemnity, it does a pretty good job of shutting down Nissa who shakes the world as well, since it prevents the opponent from putting counters on their lands. For now, probably just keep ramping. There is an argument for getting 9 lives in play before they can Thought Seize it as well. So, I guess we can void Approach. Is this a game where we're just going to cast Approach twice? It's probably going to be too slow. And then I could Amirius Call to make two tokens. Yeah, I guess that's fine. Can threaten Nissa. If the extinction event, it also gets rid of their land. Alright, and there we go. Solemnity, nine lives. City's Blessing achieved. And now we just gotta find a way to shut down Planeswalkers or cards like Maelstrom Pulse or Casualties of War. So the plus one doesn't do anything. Which her opponent now realized. And 
escapes Uro. Alright. So do I want a Wrath of God? I guess I do. And that still leaves a little bit of mana, not enough to activate Arch. And I guess we don't have enough white mana for castles, so I should maybe draw with Mindstone then. Intervention, that's nice. So, I guess we don't have enough mana for both here, do we? So, I mean, I could just Intervention now and name either Maelstrom Pulse or Casualties of War. Don't necessarily want to name Ugin because I can shut down Ugin with Immortal Sun, whereas the only way to shut down Maelstrom Pulse is with Intervention. So I think I name Maelstrom Pulse now. And then we might as well put this in hand. They get to draw a card from Uro, but that's no big deal. If they want to ultimate Nissa, be my guest. And then, yeah, just gotta find Immortal Sun to make sure they don't kill us with an Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Opponent still hasn't learned how Solemnity works. So do we want to shut down a card draw or draw cards ourselves? I think drawing cards ourselves is more important. And then I guess Idol can go after Nyssa for what it's worth. Or we can draw with Mindstone. Can also play Kahira, I've got some options. Yeah, we'll just play Mindstone. Based on the intense hovering over my permanence, I think my opponent's a little frustrated. So this is probably a giant hydroid crisis. Yeah, that can draw them into all sorts of answers. And based on the fact that they haven't conceded yet, they probably have some answers in their deck. Solemnity does make it so crisis dies right away. And the Thought Seas can take my Wrath. Well, at least my opponent's decking first. If they don't get rid of uh, 9 lives. So we've got 2 draw steps to maybe find a Mortal Sun before a potential Ugin comes down. Banishing Lights doesn't do a whole lot. Alright, so... Yeah, it doesn't seem like I'm gonna be able to cast Immortal Sun even if I draw it here. So I can uh, prevent my opponent from making a ton of mana with Nyssa by exiling it, but they've got all the mana in the world anyway. So I don't know if it really matters at this point. So maybe draw with Arch anyway, see what we can find. A Mindstone. Might see a second Hydroid Crisis to potentially draw more cards, but it's just gonna be Uro escaped. To draw one.
Well, apparently they haven't found what they were looking for yet. Hydroid for 14, leaving enough mana to potentially cast something afterwards. Six cards remaining. And do they have an Ugin here? Another Uro. Well, maybe they don't have an answer after all. I'm curious to know whether or not they actually had a Maelstrom Pulse in their deck. I was not prepared. Four cards left. Fatal Push, their own Trium which is indestructible because of the Nissa emblem. Thought Cease to take away Banishing Light. Thought Cease to take away Kahira. Alright. Anything else? Another Fatal Push. Alright, opponent's got four cards left. They could have thought seized themselves to show me that they had a Maelstrom Pulse in there or not. Emiria's Call. Can I cast this? I guess I don't have enough mana. Alright. Spiral. Down to two cards. Cycle Feathered Pools. One card remains. Well, at this point it has to be Ugin, even like a Casualties of War to destroy Solemnity. Wouldn't leave them enough time. Alright, Crisis for 23 to end the game. GG's. Alright, so we managed to lock out the Sultai deck, which luckily didn't have any other answers for Solemnity here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, this hand is reasonable. We've got a bit of ramp, a bit of scry with Zelfren Void. And then we're just missing Tutor for 9 lives, or just 9 lives itself. So turn 1, probably just play Castle Tapped, since who knows, maybe we'll end up casting Emirio's Call if we draw a bunch of lands. See what we're up against, and then maybe play a Void next turn. Alright, well there's another Solemnity that's not too useful. So I'm just looking for 9 lives or Tutor, assuming those are going to be good against a red deck. Arch. Arch could be nice as a card draw effect, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and put that on the bottom for now. And play Idol, which comes into play tapped, as opposed to Mindstone, which we can tap for mana right away. And then if we're up against a burn deck, Solemnity Nine Lives is basically game over, unless they've got Bone Crusher Giants. And that appears to be the case, so I guess Mindstone plus Baffling Ends is fine for now. And I should probably just uh, play Emirius Call as a land. Could have also played Solemnity to prevent Steamkin from accumulating any plus one counters, which would have been fine too. Although getting rid of the creatures so they can spectacle can also be useful. Yeah, I'll just play Solemnity now, as opposed to putting Kahira in hand and then probably still play this tapped and then we can start making tokens with Castle. Could also sacrifice Mindstone, although if we draw Immortal Sun, I'm gonna need 6 mana. Thrill discarding Arclight Phoenix, alright, so Rest in Peace could also be useful in this matchup. Although if we find Shooter, of course we're gonna get 9 lives. 
Fury, so they're gonna try and get back Phoenix here. Do they have a second copy to put in the graveyard? Another Fury. So worst case scenario, Cathartic Reunion discarding two more copies of Arclight Phoenix. Instead just Thrill for Mountain, get back Phoenix. That's not too bad. Alright, let's see if we can find some action. Planes I don't need. Baffling End cannot get rid of Phoenix, so I can either make a token, hit for two, maybe draw with Mindstone. Let's draw with Mindstone. Another idol. Alright. So, we've got some outs. Four copies of Idyllic Tutor. Four copies of Nine Lives. Immortal Sun would be great. I guess even just Approach of the Second Sun gaining seven could be powerful. A rest in Peace could have its moments as well. Gideon's Intervention naming Arclight Phoenix. Just a Banishing Light to exile it. Or a Wrath of God to wipe the board. So, a lot of good draws. There's another Steamkin, although with Solemnity in play it's not gonna get any counters. So maybe your opponent didn't take that into consideration. And a Maximize Velocity. Alright, take five. Another Solemnity, not exactly what we were hoping for. So I guess I'll just Baffling and the Steamkin, even though it's just a 1-1. One, one. And then play Kahira, which is probably gonna get shocked. Tormenting Voice discarding a second Phoenix, alright. That's starting to become an issue. If they can get it back. Velocity discarding a third Phoenix. Uh oh. I guess we might just be dead here. If they have a shock at our face. Yep. Well, we couldn't find our nine lives in time here. And triple Phoenix out of nowhere is gonna get the job done. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Lurus deck. If this is the red-blank version, rest in peace is quite effective. Against Spirit Dancer, we don't have any cheap removal. Um, Tudor could find removal, but that might be a little too slow. And we don't have Solemnity or Nine Lives. Although, I guess just getting a 9 lives, if we can find a second white source, also buys us quite a bit of time. Yeah, I guess we'll try it. Ooh, Steam Vents. That's unexpected, so... Not sure what deck my opponent's playing, necessarily. Maybe a Grixis Pyromancer deck with Stormcaller. Looks like it. Well, let's shut down Arcanist's... So this is basically the red-black Arcanist deck, just splashing blue for Seagate Stormcaller. And there it is. Pretty good in combination with Village Rites, especially. And there it is. Draw four. At least we get to ramp effectively here. Mindstone into Idol. And then maybe next run play Mortal Sun, which would be a pretty big deal. Although they might have a Thought Seize to take it away. 
Rest in peace, definitely a great card in this matchup. This is Stormcaller Thoughtseize. Yep. So, goodbye Immortal Sun, goodbye maybe Idyllic Tutor. Don't think the Grixis deck has any abrades in the main deck to destroy Immortal Sun. Takes the idol instead. Do they have another Thought Seize here, maybe? Alright, maybe they do have an abrade in hand. Guess we'll find out. And the card advantage from Immortal Sun is going to be quite nice. Can find us some removal and eventually the combo. Croxa gets rid of Baffling End. And gets exiled. Yeah, if they don't have an abrade here, I don't quite get the reasoning of not taking Immortal Sun. Put Slurus in hand. Play Castle, which now makes 2 2 tokens. Pass it back and then can make a token to maybe block. Might see a fatal push here before blockers. But we have achieved the city's blessing, so we can also draw with Arch now. Another village rides to draw two. But yeah, now with Immortal Sun in play, I feel pretty confident in our abilities to close out the game. Still have four copies of Wrath of God we can draw. Do I want to activate Mindstone? Yeah, I guess I do. Alright, so Mindstone's essentially free to play since it costs one mana and taps for one mana. And then what do I want to find with Idyllic Tutor? Or do we wait until we find the second of Solemnity or Nine Lives? And then for now, do I Banishing Light anything? Could draw with Arch, but I kind of want to do it end of turn to play around Thoughtseize. Or I could draw with Mindstone. Alright, that uh, answers that question. So play 9 lives and then... I can still tutor Solemnity, or I could do that next turn. And for now, maybe Banishing Light a Pyromancer to prevent the opponent from making a bunch of tokens and dealing 9 damage here with uh, 9 lives in play. And then if they don't have Thoughtseize or another Croxa, I can tutor up Solemnity, which should be game over. I guess Croxa is a reason to hold on to the Banishing Light so we can keep tutor in hand instead. Pretty happy to trade here. Another village rights. Yeah, the turn to rest in peace, doing a lot of work. Nine lives has one counter now. Alright, and we get to tutor up Solemnity. And there we go. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. We've got a bit of removal, a bit of card selection with Void and Tutor to find one of the combo pieces. Didn't think I'll be playing out Emiria as a 7 mana sorcery.
And a turn one thought seize of a blue black pathway doesn't bode well. Takes a baffling end, so I guess they are a creature deck. We'll wait on playing void until we have a bit more information. So maybe a blue-black rogue deck, another Thoughtseize. Well, probably takes another Baffling End and Immortal Sun. All right, let's see what's on top. A land, I guess I'll take a land since we want to cast Immortal Sun eventually. No point in casting Tutor when we don't know what we should get. Yeah, they can have Kahira, don't really care. Although they probably have a removal spell they're not going to be using otherwise. Sure. Alright, I mean, I'll take a land of the top. Nine lives, so now we know what to get with Tutor. So land would let me tutor for Solemnity and play Solemnity. Although it's not guaranteed to be game over against blue-black, they could have some bounce spells. Nine lives also prevents a life gain from lifelink since the damage is prevented. Alright. Resolves. Probably just get Solemnity. So we're up to two counters. Sure, let's see if this resolves. It does. So how is my opponent going to get rid of Solemnity 9 lives? I see Exquisite Blood. Well, I guess if they have Exquisite Blood Veto, that can kill me through Solemnity 9 lives. Because it causes loss of life instead of damage. So, is there anything I can do with Tutor to prevent that? I guess get Banishing Light or get uh, Gideon's Intervention to name Vito. Although if they play Vito next turn it's going to be a little awkward. So maybe Banishing Light is safer. And then they might not be able to kill me next turn yet, because they still need to gain life to initiate the combo. Alright, they have a second Exquisite Blood. So Tutor for Intervention would have been better. Just gonna play Mortal Sun now. Let's see if my opponents can assemble their combo, whatever it may be. And then I guess we just want to find our win conditions. Probably doesn't hurt to Baffling and the Murder Strider. Sure. I guess they wanted to put Murder Strider on the bottom instead of having it exiled. Or they wanted to put cards in Graveyard for escape purposes. Alright, so... 
we get to draw two cards per turn. And there's approach. Resolves, and we'll be able to draw it pretty quickly here. Thanks to Immortal Sun and Arch. Our opponent's desperately digging with Castle to find an answer. Zalfren Void is also incredibly useful to scry cards to the bottom and find our approach a little bit sooner. So we should be able to find it next turn. And then I guess we'll draw. Another idol. Backup Solemnity, just in case. Next turn we get to draw two. We might not have enough mana to draw and cast uh, Approach. There's Veto, although we can Banishing Light it before it goes off. And my opponent still needs a way to gain life to kind of initiate the combo anyway. So that doesn't leave enough for a 6 mana uh, approach since we're 1 mana short. So I guess we'll just uh, baffling and veto pass and then next turn kill them. So yeah, my opponent had the combo, but because the uh, Solemnity 9 lives prevents life gain, they couldn't initiate the first trigger, which would have gained them life. Life gain would have translated into damage with Veto, and then damage would have translated into more life gain with Exquisite Blood, and that would keep looping until we're dead. But luckily we didn't have to deal with it. So yeah, sweet. Managed to beat a blue-black combo deck here too, so we faced a pretty nice variety of decks. Overall, the strategy is going to be at its best against creature decks that just don't have much interaction for our enchantments. Decks like Goblins, the Spirit Dancer deck, most burn decks except for the ones that have four copies of Bonecrusher Giant, which can be somewhat problematic if we don't find Gideon's Intervention in time. So a lot of good matchups in Historic since so many decks tend to be aggressive creature decks, but then against some of the more controlling decks we can struggle. Decks like the Colorless Ramp deck is a pretty bad matchup. And then against author combo decks, we can sometimes win if we have like an authority of the consoles, like we mentioned in the introduction against a Neoform deck that can buy us a lot of time. And of course, Gideon's intervention can also be pretty key. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.